Welcome back, friends, to the Cantor's Corner. This week we read in Parshat Lech Lecha how Avram is commanded to leave his native land and to go live in the land of God's choosing. While there, Avram and others refer to him as a ger. Now, in modern Hebrew, the word ger is a convert. However, in the biblical times, the word has a very different connotation. A ger, or a ger toshav, I would translate as a resident alien. These days, we would refer to a ger as an immigrant or a migrant. We have our very own set of crises that have been going on, dealing with huge populations of migrants. They've been streaming into multiple countries in Europe, escaping oppression and torture in their native lands. These people are risking their lives. So we've heard of boats capsizing, small children and parents dying because they couldn't make the trip. Why are they making this trip? Why are they risking their lives? Because these people know that if they were to stay in their native country, they would more than likely perish either by their government or by drug cartels that are controlling the area. Now, when people first started making their way into many of these European countries, a number of them chose to close off their borders like Australia and Hungary and I believe the Czech Republic as well. Now, reasons behind this, um, there are multiple reasons. I'm sure some of the countries felt that they couldn't support this huge population entering their country. And I also know that a number of people were unhappy with the idea of different people coming into their nation and diluting the population, altering the character of their country. Now, when people, uh, there are some countries that were not keen on letting people in. However, after a time, Germany decided, acting as a, a European superpower, that they wanted to open up their borders to let people come in. At first, Germans were very happy to let people in because they knew that this was that they were morally obligated to help refugees that were seeking asylum. However, more recently, Germans have not been too happy about it at all. In fact, the opinion regarding whether or not Germany should house migrants when the open door policy came into effect, 50% of the population approved of this plan of action. Now, more than 50% of Germans disapprove of letting migrants stream into their country. It's taking a big hit on Germany's resources and living facilities especially. So there are quite a few people that are still not receiving good care. This is especially the case in parts of Greece where numerous migrants have been trying to make their way into Greece, especially thanks to its, thanks to its location. There isn't as much sailing that needs to happen in order to enter Greece from parts of North Africa. Now, Germany, now, excuse me, Greece was trying to cover up their migrant problem, especially when the uh, prime minister made his way through. There are multiple reports of people living in horribly squalid conditions with lack of access to basic necessities like clean drinking water and sanitation and, uh, and shelter. There's also been a rise in xenophobic parties in many of these nations, um, especially most recently, in, again, in Germany, where uh, a, a, in a recent election, the Social Democrats managed to keep maintain their lead. However, a more right-winged party that was focused on nationalism and was uh, not, and not hiding as much their xenophobia gained quite a few votes uh, campaigning to stop this flow of migration. Australia still has a closed border policy and people have been protesting this uh, in Australia. They've made a deal with a number of island nations nearby to just shuttle the migrants over to those islands and camps where they are lacking access to basic human resources 
and in return, Australia is providing them plenty of millions of dollars of relief in aid. Or in aid. Whether or not this is right, that has yet to be determined. And let's not forget that America has its own issues. America has been uh, sponsoring, paying quite a bit of money to Mexico to halt the flow of migrants from South America into the U.S. Uh, using pretty brutal methods to detain people and set up as many administrative roadblocks to prevent these people from entering the U.S. A, if you want to read more about it, I recommend reading the New York Times article, The Refugees at Our Door. So this now brings me to the question of what can we do about this? One thing we can do is we can spread the word that America is taking serious action to prevent the flow of migrants into its country vis-a-vis -vis Mexico. This is a story that's not getting a lot of coverage in the media, especially because the people that are falling prey and victim to this don't have a very big political voice. They are a part of what I believe is America's undercast. You can contact your federal representative or state or senator. Remind them that immigration reform is a serious issue. Immigration is pivotal to our country. It is part of how we see ourselves as a nation of immigrants, a melting pot where people can come together and no matter who you are, you can achieve the American dream. They are vital. These migrants are vital to our economy, whether or not you realize it. We can donate to organizations like Doctors Without Borders. We can donate to UNICEF and also to UNHCR. They are all focusing heavily on the immigrant, the migrant uh, crisis, um, especially with Syrian migrants and Afghani and Pakistani migrants. We as Jews know all about being a ger toshav. From the time of Abraham to the time where we settle the land of Palestine, and which then became the land of Israel, to spreading out across the world. We have been in situations plenty of times where we were gerim, we were resident aliens, and our Torah makes many statements about how we must protect the ger, because, key, gerim hayitem be'eretz mitzrayim, because we were gerim in the land of Egypt. I challenge you to work, help me let us work together so that all people can live freely without fear of oppression.